Hey friends, Colleen Beamish here from Humor Bean Cards. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel today. I am very excited to be playing with some new products from Lawn Fawn. Um, these are the Porcupine For You stamps and dies, and they are just too cute. Um, I will be doing some paper piecing today, which means that uh, this card can be made without any Copic coloring, if that's something that's not really your jam. Um, I've picked out a variety of scraps from my stash, um, some browns, you know, porcupines, browns, but then I was also thinking maybe I would get a little playful with the colors, so I'm not quite sure which papers I'm going to use yet, but I have a lot of different patterns and designs to choose from. Um, so, without further ado, let's get into it. To start, I cut out all of the images using the dies from some white heavyweight cardstock. I find it easiest just to keep all of my dies connected, um, rather than breaking them all up into individual dies and just to cut them all out at once so then I have the images for other projects. I use the negative to line up all the images and then line up the stamps with the cutout pieces. So again, I did that with all of the images and I'm just stamping that using some ink. I prefer Gina K Amalgam Black ink in the color Obsidian. And then I'm just um, applying pressure with my Pink Fresh Studio stamping uh, block um, just to make sure I have a really good impression. Now for the paper piecing. I am going to stamp the image onto all the various uh, pieces of pattern paper that I want to be using. Um, so you can see here I've stamped it on a patterned piece and then a solid piece and that's going to make up my first porcupine. Um, and then I'm going to do the same for a smaller porcupine. I find it really fun to do patterns more so than solid colors because I think it makes it really unique and kind of an effect that you can't get with Copic coloring but for this I kind of did a mix so one solid color and then one pattern color. I'm also stamping the trees down on some stripey paper um, and then I'm going to get to fussy cutting. This is the part that makes pa paper piecing a little bit tricky if you're not really a fan of fussy cutting, then this technique probably isn't for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at where I want the lines to be part of the image. So first I'm cutting out, um, this is the patterned paper, and I'm cutting out the like front side of the porcupine, the what would be his feet, his arm, his belly, and his face. Um, and I'm just cutting outside of the black line but I'm not leaving any extra border just making sure that the black line is still included in the image. This doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to be gluing it on top of the stamped image on white cardstock so that black line will still be there if you go kind of back and forth over it in your cutting. Now as I come around the ear I'm cutting inside the black line because I want the black line border to be part of the um I don't know what the back of a porcupine is called but the 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 pine knee part so I'm cutting inside the black line here and I'm just taking my time this video is sped up so I definitely don't fussy cut this fast but I find what's very helpful for me is to um well, first I'll show you what I have cut here. I can use the spiny part there for another uh, porcupine in the future. But here you'll see, I find it easier to rotate the paper than to rotate my scissors. And that just makes it easier to get into the smaller spaces um, rather than trying to maneuver with my the hand holding the scissors. I hope that's helpful to you. So yeah, I'll just keep fussy cutting. Um, all of the images in the same way. So for this one, I'm focusing on the porcupine pine part, the back. <laughs> and um, again, I'm cutting outside of that black line. And then when I get to the ear, what I'll do differently is that I will stay um, inside. Like, I'll go around the ear so that the black line is part of this image where it wasn't part of the last one. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them down below um, in the comments box. Also, be sure to check out the description because I do have all of the products I used today linked and they can all be found at scrapbookpal.com.
So I did go ahead and do the same for the smaller porcupine and now I will do some gluing. So like I said, we're gluing those pieces that I just cut out onto the stamped images. What this does is it gives us a guide for connecting the pieces, kind of like a puzzle, but it also gives your um, die cuts some more structure. So the pattern paper or the other paper that you're using is probably a lighter weight. In my case, it was a much lighter weight and I wanted it to be a little bit heavier so that I could pop it up on my card without having any issues. So this is just giving it um, some structure and a background and it adds that white border, which um, in this case I really like. Sometimes I'm not a fan of the white border, um, but for this card, I do appreciate it. So I do the same for the smaller porcupine and then um, I will add some little details with a Copic marker. So now I'm going in with the Copic marker R20 blush. Um, and this step is completely unnecessary if you don't have Copic markers, but I just like to add a little touch of pink on the cheeks because I think it's a really cute addition. And I also added pink to the little nose and ears on each of my porcupines. Um, and then I will go in with a colorless blender and just kind of pounce that around the pink so that it spreads it out a little bit more. Again, completely unnecessary, um, but I just like how that looks. And then lastly, I will add some details with a white gel pen. Um, I just think that completes the image. So I will repeat these steps for the trees. Um, you might be wondering, why did I bother <laughs> stamping and cutting out trees that look pretty much the same? And you know, I wasn't really thinking about it. Uh, you could definitely do a more playful tree. I was kind of going for a white birch kind of vibe but you could definitely go in with a brown or some other color to be a little bit more playful, like an enchanted forest of sorts. Um, but that's just what I went with for today. Um, so yeah, you never know what you're gonna like until you try it out. So now that all of my pieces are set, I'm going to work on the background of my card. Here I have a folded A2 card. Um, size Final card size is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have masked off the bottom of that card using some washi tape. You can use any low tack tape that you have. And then I'm going in with a blending brush and some spun sugar distress oxide ink. And I'm just doing a very light blending. I've obviously sped this up because blending can take a little bit of time, especially with such a pale color. But um, I'm, as you can see, I'm concentrating the color down at the bottom and then blending upwards. Um, and I find using a very light hand, large circular strokes, and blending it, you know, starting on the tape and blending it upwards so you're not going directly from the ink pad to the paper with the brush um, prevents it from being splotchy. So I just kept ink blending until I liked how it looked. Again, I was going for something kind of subtle. Um, I didn't want the background to have too much going on. And then I'll peel away the washi tape. And to do that, I'm just going very slowly and I'm folding it back over on top of itself. And that just helps you to remove it cleanly without tearing your cardstock. Um, and there you go, you have a perfect straight line. And I'm just gonna add my scene over top. So first I'm putting in the trees using some liquid glue. I have that first porcupine on the scene just so I can um, kind of understand the spacing and how I want it laid out. It's not uh, stuck down yet. So I'll stick down the second tree and then I'm gonna go in with some foam tape on the back of the porcupines on both of them. Uh, and I will kind of play with the positioning of these a little bit to make sure I have them where I want. I will say that my whole scene ended up a little bit to the left on my card, not exactly centered, but it's something that really doesn't bother me all that much. And I think, um, I think that's kind of when I first noticed it and that's when I started to shift my porcupines over um, just slightly. And the foam tape does allow you... Um, as long as you don't like really press it down at first to pick it back up and move it as needed. Um, I'm just double checking here that it wasn't, uh, I wanted it to be flat on my card and not affected by the tree behind it. And it seemed like it was getting stuck up on that tree. So I just moved it over so that it was flat on the card without being on the tree at all. Um, 
And yeah, I really like how that's turning out. So then I'm going in with a little stamp that says boop. It's with asterisks on the end of it. And it's just like the one porcupine is touching the other porcupine's nose. I just think that's super cute. And when I saw it in the stamp set, I immediately knew that that's, I wanted to use that in some way. So I stamped down the sentiment in that black ink that says, you're so poor cute pine. Who doesn't love a pun? And now I am adding some leaves to my trees. So I was going back and forth about whether I wanted to do paper piecing for this as well or do Copic coloring. But really, I found what was easiest for me was to do paper piecing. I think it's just really quick and easy to do. Um, for the leaves, I didn't do the white background for each uh, stamped image. I just did the, the pattern paper image and then I fussy cut all of them out. Again, if you don't like fussy cutting, this is not going to be an enjoyable process for you. But for those of us who find fussy cutting relaxing or therapeutic, this is a great way to spend some time is just cutting these little leaves out. Um, and yeah, so I cut out all these images and then I'm going to go ahead and just glue them down to my card. The stamp set had two different sizes of leaves. So there are some larger leaf clusters and a larger single leaf and then a smaller uh, leaf cluster and a smaller leaf for each tree size. So I'm putting all of the larger leaves on the larger tree and same with the smaller ones. Um, I put a cluster on each branch and then I will fill in gaps with the single leaves. Um, if you wanted to really fill out the tree, I would just continue to add leaves around the tree, um, single leaves and bunches as you see fit. I just went with um, kind of simple. I didn't want to cut out so many leaves. Like even though I enjoy fussy cutting, I think there is a limit. And um, so this was the perfect amount for me. I just cut out as many as I could fit on that one piece of pattern paper that I had on hand. And again, I'm just using some liquid glue. I'm putting the glue down on the tree and then just um, sticking the paper to it. And here I am fill, like adding in whatever leaves I have left over. So I just put them wherever um, on the tree that I wanted. It, there's really no science to it. Just uh, like keep playing with it until you like the look. Um, something else you could do is to um, add ink blending around the outside of your images, your pattern paper images, and that can just add some depth. So if, um, for example, my leaves are all kind of a peachy pink color, I could go in with a, a little bit of a darker pink and add some ink blending for dimension. I didn't bother uh, today because um, I just didn't feel the need and I really like how it looks, but that's something you could do if you wanted it, if you felt like just using pattern paper was looking a little bit flat on your card. So now this is what I meant by filling in around the tree. I just stuck some leaves um, not connected to the tree image at all, just like on the background of my card, and it definitely fills it out a little bit. So next I am stamping in a butterfly. There's not a die for the butterfly, but I wanted to, um, like I said, my, my scene is a little offset to the left. So I felt like adding this butterfly kind of centered it more. And I am Copic coloring this just because, like I said, there's not a die for this and um, it's a really small image, so I didn't want to try to fussy cut it. So I'm just using some pinks that I have um, in my collection and doing some very, very simple Copic coloring. So um, this step, again, if you don't have Copic markers, isn't necessary at all. And you could definitely um, paper piece this part if you wanted to as well. So here is my finished card. I think this is so sweet. It will be the perfect card for Valentine's Day or for Mother's Day even. And um, yeah, I had so much fun using these products from Lawn Fawn. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel for a lot more crafty inspiration.